This is the Reluctant Leader Podcast, the podcast designed to help you if you've landed a leadership role through no fault of your own and now need to find out what you should be doing. I'm your host, Mark Terrell, and have been there and know what it feels like and made all the mistakes. In each episode, I'll be getting to grips with a leadership topic by interviewing an expert in their field. You'll find out why they do what they do and take away some top tips you can use to become a more confident leader. For more content and to keep in touch with how the project is developing, go to www.thereluctantleader.co.uk. If you have any comments about the episode, you'll find me on LinkedIn, Facebook and Twitter. So let's crack on with the show. Today I'm talking to Stefan Thomas. When the Four Dummies team needed an author for business networking for dummies, they approached Stefan. He has since gone on to write two more Amazon bestsellers, Instant Networking and Win the Room, and speaks to audiences all over Europe on the subject of business networking. His insights into joining up traditional networking and social media have led him to be described as the authority on networking in the 21st century. You can find Stefan on LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Snapchat. I hope you enjoyed this chat we had about business networking, and I will catch you all on the other side. Steph, welcome to the Reluctant Leader podcast. Thank you for having me on. It's good to talk to you, Mark, as ever. I'm looking forward to this. Um, I think the first thing we need to do to anybody that's tuned into this episode, noticing that it's about networking, is that we... To make it clear, we won't be talking about connecting computers or anything like that today. <laughs> um, just to make it clear, and I don't want to waste people's time. Um, so we are talking about networking in the sense of networking with other people. Uh, and, and that's, um, I'm, I'm guessing that's what you still do. You haven't sort of um, sidetracked into another sort of networking, have you, Steph? It's, it's, <laughs> a, surprisingly, it's a surprisingly relevant comment because... <laughs> I, I am often credited with writing the book Networking for Dummies, um, mm-hmm. and that book does exist, but that book is all about um, Cat5 and Cat6 cables, and I didn't write it. Um, I wrote the book Business Networking for Dummies, which is about what we do when we meet people in real life, basically. So I think, and I hope, um, <laughs> although I have a basic knowledge of Cat5 and Cat6 cabling, I hope that's what we're going to be talking about today. Yes, I think we should stick to what we know a little <laughs> bit about, and um, obviously you know a lot about it. So um, so before we get stuck into the um, the topic of networking, uh, the first question I always ask our, my guests is to is uh, actually what do you, why do you do what you do, uh, and what was that pivotal moment that took you down this path? I guess there's been there's been lots of pivotal moments to start with 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 that one really. Um, back in back in 2007, I had quite a major unplanned change of career. Um, I think is the politest way to describe it, um, unplanned and not my choice. And 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 I, I ended up running a business for myself. I ended up deciding to go self-employed. Um, that was the pivotal moment that led me to start taking my own networking seriously. So what I mean by taking it seriously is that I, I was going to a lot of networking events, but all of a sudden I had to go to networking events and make sales there. I I was doing that out of desperation and got rather good at it. And then I, I was copywriting. I was copywriting for a business, writing text for other people. Um, but then I was getting more of a reputation of being good at getting sales from networking. And that was what people were starting to ask my advice about. And, and it turned out by joining up the two things that I'm very good with words, and I seemed to understand this networking thing, that I seem to be able to teach people to, to get better at it. So, so why I do it is that I watch people who are going to a ton of networking events but not making any sales all of a sudden start making sales once I've worked with them. So that's, that's fab. Um, hearing from people that they've, they've made a sale that they wouldn't have made before or are making loads more sales, that, that's what keeps me going because obviously those people are then making money. Those people are, are very often lifting themselves from a situation. Um, so the pivotal moment was, was pretty disastrous, led to me having no money and having to make some money. Um, but what led from that is that me realizing that I was one of those people who just instinctively got networking 
But not only could I do that for myself, but I seem to be able to teach other people to do it, which is is why I do what I do now. Mm. And I think that's quite typical in a lot of people's um, stories when they talk about that pivotal moment. It's really the the big shove or the big thing that was actually um, uh, imposed on them that uh, came yes. along and actually you had to re- reevaluate, think about what you're doing and actually, what am I good at? Uh, and use those skills to your advantage. Um, I, I don't think I would have been brave enough, to be honest, Mark. I, <laughs> I think I would still have been in the same career that I was in from 1988 to 2007, I think I would have stuck with that. And Mm. in a lot of ways, that would have been the sensible thing to do, frankly. But I was, yeah, I was pushed off the cliff. cliff. I I, I didn't choose to jump. Mm. Yeah, and I think that's a relevant point because we are, obviously the audience we're we're talking to here are reluctant leaders uh, or leaders, so people in, in a leadership position. And... Some people might be thinking, well, why, why should I spend my time going to networking events? Surely I'm, I should be you know, spending my time running my business. But I, I think um, what networking is, is actually developing a network. Uh, and that's, that's the crux of it, isn't it? Yeah, it, it is. And it's something which I would contend we, we need to do as part of running a business. So we need several networks. We need a network of customers. We need to find customers. We need a network of suppliers. We need someone to, to sell us our, um, our mobile phone contracts, our printing, our insurance, our whatever it is we need for our business. And typically, we we need or, or very often appreciate a network of of advisors, helpers, confidants as well. Mm-hmm. What what I love about networking is that someone else has gone to the trouble of putting a load of people in a room together for me. So all I need to do is turn up and and talk to them and and get to know some of the people in the room, and some of those people become part of the network of suppliers or the network of of customers and clients or the network of just people who I know and can pick up the phone to at some point in the future. I I find it very efficient use of my time to go somewhere where someone else, whoever's organizing the networking event, has has gone to the trouble of putting a bunch of people together for me. Mm, Yeah. And and I think um, what's important here is that uh, networking actually allows us to forward think or th- forward plan in a way in that we don't, none of us really know what we need in the future. We, we you know, we, we make assumptions that, you know, everything's fine, but as we know, drastic things come along um, and we've got to react to them. Um, and, and if we've got a, a network to, to call on, then that's going to be easier and quicker to, to recover from. So I think it's a networking. I see it as something that is, it's about your future, isn't it? It's about planning and having something that's a strategy in place that helps you with um, coping with things that are unforeseen at the moment. Yeah, it, it was often said, and it wasn't me who said it, but someone said that you should you should build your network when you don't need it so that it's there when you do. Mm-hmm. And what people very often do is, is is get busy and don't go networking. And then all of a sudden when they're not busy, they don't have a network to call on. And and, and so I, I would I would go along with, I would endorse that advice that it's mm. for, for me um, since 2007, building, nurturing, uh, growing that that network has been has been a constant for me, has been something that I, I do every week, regardless of whether I'm I'm busy with other stuff or not. Mm. And I think, well, I know I'm, I was guilty in my retail days of not networking. I, and saying that I networked within my sort of community, yep. in other words, other retailers, so people are like me, but I, I didn't cast my net wide enough. And um, when it came to uh, finding another career from after selling that retail business, yep. uh, I, I didn't really know what networking was. I just thought, you know, I, I was wandering around going to a few few um free events and you know trying to sort of find my way and then i fen- I, I eventually f- found my way to a, a a group which was a bit more formal and, and that we had to you know do the elevator pitch um and that was my realization that actually when you go networking you've got to 
have a plan in place. You've got to think about what it is that you've got to do and actually how to get your message across. And I can remember standing up at that event and, and ha- didn't really have a clue. So I think what I'm going to go on to at this point is, is the, really the things that put people off maybe networking. And I think one of those things, uh, which I had a, a obviously experience of is, is the elevator pitch and not really having that, that as um, you know, honed to a point where you actually know what you're talking about and that's important isn't it It, it, it's really important but it's really important in business anyway Mm. to to have an understanding of how to introduce our business when someone asks us the question what do you do um now now as it goes i i really dislike the expression the elevator pitch Mm. um that idea that you would be in an elevator with Richard Branson and mm-hmm. you've only got 60 seconds and therefore you've got to tell him all about your business and you've got to have this potted pitch. W- what really interests me about that is that everyone else who goes to networking goes for the sake of their business. They don't actually go for the sake of yours. So, so this idea that we should have a potted pitch to tell everyone about our business to my mind, goes against how we naturally communicate as, as human beings. What, what, I, what I do myself, what I encourage other people to do, is to start conversations with other people in the room, have an idea of how you're going to introduce your business, have a structure of how you're going to introduce your business if you need to do a standard 40 or 60 seconds, but, but really specifically think about having the conversation with other people, think about what what they're buying rather than what you're selling because the two things are different. But actually, don't get too caught up on having a a pitch-perfect, word-perfect elevator pitch because when when you pitch, when you pitch at someone for business, it it suggests that they are a prospect, that they are inherently interested in in buying from you. So... um, if, if I went along to the Thursday market in my local town, the greengrocer would have a reasonable belief that if I was standing in front of his stall, that I'm interested in buying fruit or veg. So he would then pitch to me and try and get me to buy whatever the best or, or cheapest fruit or veg was. People don't go to networking events to buy from you. They go to networking events to, to, for, for the sake of their own business. Once people get their head around that, perversely, mm-hmm. they can end up making many more sales than if they walk in the room and try and sell to everyone. <laughs> yes, and that was a, that's a big lesson to learn, actually. Uh, and it's being prepared and, and re- realising that you're not there. and haven't. I, th- I think a lot of people put a lot of pressure on themselves when they go to networking events, don't they? And, and think that I've got to take something away or you know, I've got to get a lead out of this or something. But I think if you're, you're in that mindset, that doesn't really help, does it? It, it doesn't at all. Um, to to my mind, it, people it, it set the bar too high. So when what what I find is that people go to networking events thinking that they've got to um, achieve something at the event it, it itself. The I, I wrote something a while ago that every big opportunity starts with a little conversation. The networking event itself should only be the start of the conversation. People try and achieve the whole conversation within the networking event. Yeah, absolutely. I hundred percent agree with that. And and it's 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 getting that clear in your mind and, and taking that pressure away. And that we, what we're talking about really, networking is 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 about conversations. As you've already mentioned, it's it's develop, starting a conversation. And if that conversation led somewhere, that it it. Um, and uh, you know another conversation is is justified then that's that's what we should be doing is is taking that away from the networking event and, and meeting somewhere else to have a maybe a de- more bit more detailed conversation about whatever it is we were talking about a- a- absolutely every big opportunity starts with a little conversation and there's, there's quite a lot going on in that sound bite mm-hmm. particularly the bit about the conversation starting this is what i talk to people about a lot People get so hung up on delivering a perfect elevator pitch, delivering a perfect 60 seconds or 40 seconds introduction. And people get hung up that if they don't get that right, then they are simply not good at networking. The truth is that networking is much more about what we do after the networking events than what we do 
at the networking events and, and, and continuing the conversation. So as you've said, meeting up with people, putting in those phone calls in 2019, at the very least connecting with people on LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, where, wherever it happens to be, that enables us to continue the conversation. Something really odd happens after networking events. We, we want everyone to remember our business. We've been to a networking event. We've given out a load of business cards. We want people to really remember us so that when they need what we're selling, that they will buy from us. But then they, we put the responsibility of remembering us onto the other person, the other people. <laughs> They're really busy. We're really busy. And everyone else is, is really busy too. And yet we make them responsible for remembering us. The, the bit about the, the little conversations and, and starting the conversations, it's absolutely our responsibility to, to, to remind people that we exist. It's not their responsibility to remember us. Therefore, putting in effort to continue that conversation is, is, is absolutely, to my mind, the key to, to getting some success from networking. Yes, and, and and I've just been looking at your website, and obviously there's loads of content on there. At um, Stefan, what's it, Stefan? Oh, so actually, Stephanie the network. Re- yes, yeah, sorry. Yes. The, <laughs> I've got I've got two. I have two websites. Um, one, Stefan Thomas Biz for for my speaking and coaching work, and the networking retreat for um, or the networking retreat dot co dot uk um, mm. for the workshops and and so on that I run under that brand. So. Um, yeah. But but you, you you are right. I do put a ton of content out, and that is that is relevant to this conversation because once I've met people, I make sure that if they check me out, as as you've rightly checked me out, both both um, previously and and in, a, in in preparation for this conversation, if people check me out, they can see that I know what I'm talking about. That I've put content out there which which is helpful. I, I put tons of, of 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 stuff out there which. Um, is is completely free and people can can read and, and get some value from it, but equally continues to build that trust that after they've met me, oh wow, here's a guy who's who's written a ton of stuff that I can read to help me get better at networking, and actually what I've written I, I like to to think is is pretty credible. So that then helps to build the trust in in the people that that I've met. Yeah, so uh, absolutely, there's, there's there's tons of value on both websites. So how, um highly recommend you checking them out um, but what we're talking about or what you've just already summed up is, is is connecting really networking with other things and you've mentioned social media uh, but it's part of the whole mix isn't it and remembering where networking is it might be the start of that conversation but it's carrying it on and having a, a process in place where you 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 people take people along a journey I guess uh, and, and I think I've seen some things that you talk about that a bit that that journey because uh, people aren't we're not really in a funnel as such we're not sort of just falling yeah. down until we become a, a client of, uh, of a business we're actually we need to be led along don't we yeah I, I think the bit about connecting it all up is is really interesting to me because there's a lot for, for a small business to think about in, in 2019, and there's a ton for a business leader to think about, about where they put their, their resource, um, social media, networking, traditional marketing, email marketing, um, digital marketing, so on and so forth. The, 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 the key in my mind is that the, the, all of these things should be looked at holistically. All of these things should be looked at as, as just part of how we build the brand of that person or, or that business. So we're not connecting networking to it. Networking is, is inevitably a part of it. We, sometimes we, we meet people at networking events. Some of my um, actually most um, worthwhile connections over the years have come firstly from social media. When I when I talk about keeping in touch and, and following up with people, it broadly falls into one of two pots. What what I describe as active following up, and what I mean by that is when I've met someone and they've said we're interested in buying from you. So so this morning, someone who I met a uh, someone who I met very randomly actually a couple of weeks ago, I've had an email from that they're interested in booking me for a conference. I now need to actively follow that up. So. Already this morning, I've got a call booked with them for the, for this afternoon. 
I'm now taking responsibility for, for taking that conversation forward. They've expressed interest in buying. I'm now actively moving that conversation forward to the next step, which is a, a telephone conversation. The, the other sort of follow-up, what, what I describe as passive, is all of those people who we meet at, at networking events or connect with on social, wherever it happens to be, and who aren't immediately interested in buying from us. So, so broadly speaking, most of the population, most of the people who we meet, who we've developed a warm relationship with, but they don't want to buy what we sell yet. They, they might do in future, they might never do in future. We, we've been provided with all of these tools for keeping in touch with people. It's, it's not necessarily about following up at this stage, but keeping in touch with people and I, I think the biggest opportunity is that most people don't bother. Most people either end up with a pile of business cards in, in a desk drawer or they throw the business cards out. And after they've met someone, if they don't immediately want to buy from them, they never get in touch again. And to, to my mind, that's just a, a massive business mistake. Yeah. And, and it's interesting that I picked up a point there, actually. Networking isn't always going to be the first step. Um, if, you, if you've if met someone uh, on social, met someone, it's not, obviously not meeting them, but yeah. connecting with someone on social, if you want to meet them in person and you're you know in a similar sort of location, one way of using networking is that to say, well, I'm actually going to this event. How about meeting up? Uh, and, and using that as, as, as part of that, um, you know, because we, we all really need to meet people face to face, don't we? Yeah, yeah I, I, I honestly believe that none of us, or <laughs> unless he's listening to your show, and I, I bet you'd be flattered, but most of us aren't Jeff Bezos. Most of us don't have Amazon. So so the majority of people need to meet the people that they're, they're going to do business with, need to meet the people that, that are going to buy from them. Um, particularly in my world, the business-to-business -business service industry. So one of my um, one one of one of the connections that I've come to value hugely, a guy called Wes Linden. I met Wes in a Twitter conversation um, in 2014. I know it was 2014 because we did a presentation about it just last week. But but Wes and I met on Twitter, and we continued the conversation, and then we we both found a reason to put ourselves in the same part of the UK at the same time and and meet up for a coffee because we, we were getting on, we, we wanted to, to meet each other. I genuinely believe still in 2019 that it's still important to actually meet people, to press the flesh, to, to get to know people face to face as early as possible in the relationship. So sometimes it, it, it won't be possible. Some of my clients are overseas, so I speak to them on the phone or Zoom or Skype before we ever get to, to meet in person. But I still believe that actually taking social conversations into the real world speeds up that, that, that process of rapport, that process of, um, of building trust with, with the other person. So yes, it, it, it is... Um, and to pick up on your point, sorry, the using networking events, I I went to a, a networking event in Bournemouth yesterday. I, I, I live in Oxford, so it was a couple of hours drive. Um, the organiser of the networking event was someone who I really wanted to meet, um, uh, the wonderful Jackie Frampton, who runs the boardroom network down in Bournemouth, who, who deserves a shout out. And, mm -hmm. and so... Uh, she was gracious enough to invite me down to, to her events. Um, it was really worthwhile for me to go down and see her. And now we've gone from a LinkedIn connection to meeting, but it was really efficient use of both of our time because Jackie was already running the networking event. I got the chance to meet around 100 um, uh, business people in, in, in Bournemouth at the same time. And then afterwards, Jackie and I met up to, to, to continue our relationship to get to know each other better. So she got me to the networking event. That was really valuable for me, for, for, for me personally. So I was already grateful to Jackie for, for inviting me there. And neither of us had made an extra journey for, for the sake of meeting each other. So it was really sensible use of our time. Yeah, yeah, makes makes great sense. So I'm just thinking about now what would, uh, uh, obviously we've, we've got a good case here as to why uh, we should have a networking um, strategy in place uh, and make time to do networking. So what are the barriers actually would stop people going 
to networking events. I've, I've written down nervous. People are nervous about these things. Have you got some strategies around sort of, um, you know, controlling those nerves and, and basically being in a relaxed state or being in the best state you can be in, in one of the uh, networking events? Is that something that uh, you have yeah, to say about? My, my advice tends to be terribly practical. Um, in as much as I was very nervous when I went to my first networking events and, and wished that I'd had this advice back then, what, what I would always um, suggest people do is try and find a buddy to go along with them. Um, try and find someone who, who they can go along with at the same time. Something else that you can do is, is make social media your friend. So if you're invited to a networking event or if you choose to go along, try and use social media to suss out who else is going to be there and friend them, connect with them, um, follow them on social media before you go and start the conversation before you arrive. One of the, one of the biggest benefits which social has given me um, is that for years I've not had to walk into a room where I don't know anyone, but I've always sought out the other attendees on, on social. And, and then when I walk through the door, there will be someone who recognizes me or I will recognize them and, and we're already into a warm conversation. What, what I would really specifically do if you're going along to a networking event for the first time is be in touch with the organizers, find out what the format of the event was and make sure that you're prepared for it, whether that is having a prepared 60 or 40 seconds don't just wing it. Don't just wing it. It's too important. Um, making sure that you've got enough business cards. Um, <laughs> being really brutal about myself, I didn't take enough business cards for for the um, for the networking event in, in Bournemouth yesterday. Now, I've done you know something over a thousand networking events, so it didn't it didn't phase me. But in the past, if I'd turned up and realised I'd, I'd made a schoolboy error, that would have left me feeling nervous all morning. Um, so get in touch with the organisers before you go. Find out what's expected. Um, most organisers will email you to tell you, but find out what's expected and prepare for that in advance. Um, try and take someone with you who you know. If that mm -hmm. fails, get in touch with the people who are going to be there on social and, and make friends with them before you turn up. Yes, and I think somebody's told me once: if you're feeling a bit nervous, get there early rather so you're already in the room. If you if you don't like walking into a room full of strangers, then be in the room early so there won't be quite so many people there, and and it's easier when people people are more likely to come to, towards you, aren't they? If you're already in the room, I guess so that's a, something might work. That's my constant advice for networking, whether you are nervous or not, to plan time in your diary to be there early. Um, because why would you want to run in flustered and late and be the last person to be given a seat and that sort of thing? Um, I would always advise people to get there early if they possibly can and to leave a little bit of time at the end of the networking meeting as well to continue any conversations you, you didn't have time to, to finish. Um, yeah. Certainly being in the room early does also mean that you're likely to have a bit more time with the organisers who whose job is to to greet everyone. Um, but if you're early, they'll have a bit more time to greet you rather than the turning up when there's a queue of 12 people, all, all of whom have, have got to be booked in and so on. Mm. Uh, and you've also, you've, you mentioned it already uh, as the, your two websites and one being the networking retreat, um, which I think some people might be thinking, what a retreat just to talk about networking, but um, it might be worth you just sort of just, Talk a little bit about what that's about, and you know what what can people get from an hour? So actually, I think it's a twenty four hours um, of of the networking retreat. Yeah, so you're you're giving the me the opportunity to um, to shamelessly promote myself. So, <laughs> so if, yeah. if I'm still talk if I'm still talking in an hour, tell me to shut up, Mark. <laughs> um, I, I, I mean, actually, actually, the networking retreat, which was my concept from from a few years ago, has become a number of things now, um, but. The networking retreat, the, the flagship event of the networking retreat came from the fact that I was going to training workshops and that sort of thing where we would turn up at 10, we would leave at four, and we wouldn't really get to know the other people in the room or the organizers, the hosts, the, the, the presenters. And 
And I wanted something different with the network in retreat, not least because I was putting t- together people who already had something in common that they were small businesses. So the network in retreat runs over two days. Um, it used to be 24 hours. It's now actually longer than that. It's, it's pretty much a complete two days to, mm-hmm. to fit everything in as well as training, which I'll, I'll come to in a second. One of the biggest benefits that people tell me they get from the network in retreat is that we all stay in the same hotel. We all eat together and we all have the middle evening to get to know each other. Would they be, ne- would they be networking by any chance? <laughs> That they will be networking. So, so we, 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 spent, we spent the whole day, the whole of the first day, helping mm-hmm. people to get into the peak state for networking so that they understand how to talk about their stuff. Yeah. Then, usually around 12 of us have dinner together and get to know each other. And, and if, you, if you think that one through, I've put together businesses from all over the UK. I have people coming from England, Scotland, and Wales. Not Northern Ireland yet, but, but it'll happen. I've had people coming from England and Scotland and Wales all points of, of those countries as well. They're people who have got an interest in developing their business. Their business has reached a certain size, frankly, that they can afford to take the time out and, and afford to come to the network in retreat. And I put them together with other people who might be suppliers or customers in future. And that has just worked. People have ended up doing business with each other. The, what, what we talked about earlier, however, Networking isn't just about networking events. Networking is about so much more. So the networking retreat itself doesn't just cover how to do a, an introduction. We also look at how to follow up, how to use a CRM system, basic sales techniques so people know how and when to ask for, for the money because small business people don't like asking people to buy from them. It's, a, it, it's something that, that I come across time and time again. And we spend a load of time on LinkedIn and content, how to get your content strategy right, how to write the right blogs and articles, how to do the right videos so that you build the trust with people. The the whole thread of the networking retreat from the beginning to the end is what we do when we start those conversations to build the trust in the other person so that they trust us enough to either do business with us or refer business to us. So people come out with the skills to develop a network, which isn't just a, 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 a list of, of names and email addresses, are actually people who are somewhere on that spectrum of getting ready to buy from them or, or in a position to, to refer to them. And, and the results that we've had have, have been pretty spectacular with the people that, that I've worked with, people genuinely making significantly more sales because it's, it's not just about fit people feeling more confident. I'm I'm only interested in people getting actual results. So they, they get what they spend on the network in retreat. They get back many times in, in, in actual sales. Um, and over the years, I've, I've expanded it a little bit. Um, so the network in retreat, I also offer now two hour taster sessions, um, mm-hmm. uh, under the same, under the same brand. Plus I have a, a private members club only of, of 24 people, um, where we actively generate referrals for each other. Um, mm-hmm. So it's so so the networking retreat is two days out of your business, working on your business with me and a ton of other people, and the um, the, the the other um, parts of it are, are me working with people one to one or or in small groups. Mm. And I think um, you know it, it's all high, highly valuable stuff, uh, and I, I think putting this in, into perspective of people that the this day and age people have to manage their own careers uh, yes. we're not in a situation where we join an organization and we and we know we're, we're led and we're promoted and we're developed uh, according to the to what the, the business wants we have to lead our own career and to do that we have to have certain skills and I'm a firm believer that networking, is something that everyone should be doing, whether they're running their own business, running uh, or working in a big organisation. It doesn't matter. You need to think, like I said at the beginning, about thinking about the future, what you need in the future, developing that network that is going to be there, and and the more skills you got around there, and 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 it, it's about uh, it's about a social thing, isn't it? It's about and you can use networking skills in every 
um, walk of life. And that's, uh, that's, that's the important thing, I think, from my personal experience. Networking is more than just going to make a sale, actually. Is that's important, obviously, but actually it's about, you know, honing those skills that you can use uh, on a day-to-day basis to get better results for yourself and, and those that you interact with. So, uh, I, 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 I've talked to my eldest son about this. My eldest son mm. is a musician. Mm. And it, it really came home to him when he was given the opportunity to run an event, to run a, 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 a music event, where he didn't possess all of the skills that were needed to run this event. And so he, he went through his, his phone contacts, the people he was at, at, at college with, the people he was at school with who were also musicians, really wanted to run the event and made a few phone calls and pulled in people who had complementary skills to, to him who could do the bits and pieces to run an event that he couldn't do and realized in that moment, because we were talking about it in the car, that he was doing this networking thing that, that his dad talked about. Um, and, and so he wasn't selling to these other people in his address book, but he was using his network so that he could make a sale that he wouldn't have been able to, to, to make otherwise. And, and so it, it does really ebb into every part of our life. Um, mm. in, in our parenting, we, we tend to build networks of the other parents around us at school and, and play group and so on. In, in every aspect of our life, I find it useful to have a, a supportive network of people around me, mm. which is why you and I are talking. We're not selling <laughs> to each other at this stage, but mm. this, uh, th- th- this, this morning's activity has value for, for me because it, it, it's exposing me to your audience, and I'm really grateful for that. And, and that has presumably come because you knew, you knew that I'd be reasonably credible having got to know me. So it's, mm. it, th- that's the network working in a slightly different way. Absolutely. I, th- I think you were at one of the very first networking events I went to. So, um, yes. and obviously... Down in the Southwest. In, yes, right. Indeed. Indeed. That's, that's where it was. Um, I can't remember the exact date, but I can, uh, I'm pretty sure it was very early on in my networking um, journey. Uh, and uh, I can remember listening intently to what you were talking about, and I thought, I need to get my head around this. I wasn't, I didn't at that time, time but it, it takes a little bit of time to think about these things and put them into context. But I think yeah. um, hopefully in this last half an hour or so, we've uh, helped people realise the value of networking, why they should be doing it, uh, and, um, and obviously think about how they're using it at the moment. So with that in mind, and as time is running out, sadly, um, is there three tips that you can leave us with that we should all really be doing uh, with respect to uh, networking going forward? I would say rewind this recording and listen to what Mark Terrell said about 50 seconds ago. Mark, you said (laughs) it sometimes takes you time to work things out. One of the huge benefits of keeping in touch with people is so that you're there when they work stuff out for themselves. Mm -hmm. So, if you and I had never been in touch since then, you would never have come to the, the event which I ran with Chris Maher and so on and so mm-hmm. forth, and we wouldn't have, have this relationship. Yeah. So keep, tip number one, keeping in touch with people puts you in the right place at the right time when they're ready to take action on, on, on what you're selling, because it's all down to, to when they're ready. Um, second one, so I'm, I'm doing these in, in the wrong order now, but you just inspired me with that comment, <laughs> is be comfortable with with being you at networking events let people get to know you it's so easy to put on a suit of armor to try and be someone different but actually people will trust you more if if they see the the, the real you mm-hmm. um the, the the third one which I'll, I'll give every big opportunity starts with a little conversation the start of the conversation is far less important than continuing the conversation and and keeping it going. Most people get really good at doing the start of the conversation, put no effort into continuing the conversation afterwards. Fantastic. And I guess guess, um, you've got to be in it to win it. And if you're not in it, (laughs) you're never going to win it. You you have to be there. Those people who have said to me, you were just in the right place at the right time, Steph, were notable because they weren't there. So, uh, yes, I was there. They weren't. I sort of win on that basis. That's right. Well, thanks, Steph. That's been excellent. Uh, Really enjoyed it. Uh, Sadly, the time has now run out. Um, So I'd just like to thank you for your time today. And hopefully we will get a chance to um, catch up soon and um, continue our conversation. 
Thank you. It's been great to talk to you, Mark, as ever. Thank you for listening to this episode. If you enjoyed it, please take a moment to leave a review. Don't forget to check out The Reluctant Leader Project at www.thereluctantleader.co.uk. Make a note to start, stop or continue doing whatever struck a chord in this episode. And until next time, be the best you can be. Be the best you can be.